Yes. Mic on. Here we go. I don't even have a drink. Well, let me read this for you. This shows edutainment. That means it's education and entertainment combined. It's not to be taken as financial advice. Because I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a dude talking to a dude or a dudette on the other end of the screen. And I go get a drink. I'll be back. But you know what? You can come hear me. I need to get a drink. Look at that. Watching me come to my office. You can hear me. Just going to grab some water. And boom. I'm coming back. Ah. 18 seconds. Let's do this. Pour that right there. Some straight vodka in the morning. So good for us. Boom, let's cleanse that since then. All right. Hi, social media world. My name's Alfred Gordon Liu. This is 8 at 8. Eight minutes starts right now. Mm. And we're talking about the S&P 500. We're taking Warren Buffett's advice. We picked 20 companies to follow this year. And every month we kind of go and rotate through these companies. But today, we're talking about this company, Next Energy. And ticker symbol is NEE, -E, standing for Next, energy, Next Era Energy. It's part of the wonderful sector of utilities, and its ticker symbol is XLU. <laughs> With that said, we're moving into this. This is their investor relations page, if you don't know about these. Uh, this has a lot of great uh, reading material for nighttime, just before bed. It's great to consume it. It's good to know what the company is putting out and what the company uh, says in terms of, you know, what they're earning, what their future forecasts are, and any other kind of new developments that the company has. Usually you get it here. It's usually leaked out to a media, but you'll find it in news, news and events and presses. So nothing's going on with the, this company per se, but let's go take a look at their charts. So this is for positional traders looking to buy and hold dollar cost average into this thing or just kind of see if it's a good investment. So overall, we've been looking at this thing and we had noticed that in January, it definitely had three red arrows. But if you look this month, I wanted to show you if you don't see it right here is the movement of price has moved above its average, right? And this is a 10 day average, if I remember correctly, 10 or day, nine day average. Let me double check that highlighting. It is a 10 day average. So uh, you can see that it's moved past that. And a lot of things are reversing like this. And I, I know I'm gonna get busted for time on this, but let's just take a look at the SPX uh, for the market. You'll also see a similar thing has happened. Let's see if we can zoom in here and see if we can line that up. Pretty close. So you'll notice that this looks really similar to Next Energy's uh, chart on a monthly. But we've just seen this reversal. We've had this big dip in the markets. Now things are kind of reversing, uh, or we're seeing the first signs, right? So if you consider this uh, one green arrow uh, as one indicator, it's one out of the three indicators we have to know that it is reversing. So. I wanted to show you that, but sellers are still in control. Let's take a look at that. As you can see, uh, this color of red means that it's starting to reverse a little bit. So the sellers still have control, but they're not as strong. They're like Squid Games and a few of the tug of war people have fallen off the edge. I don't know why I thought of Squid Games, but that's what I thought of. And again, the sentiment uh, around it, Greer, uh, Fearful or greedy, it's smack dead in the middle, but you'll notice that the trend is going down. People are becoming fearful of it. Not actually rising, which is kind of interesting, right? You'd think that if it's doing better, the sentiments would get better, but we could probably see this line over in the stochastics flatten. Man, I knew it was gonna eat some time. So let's go into the next one for you swing traders. And for that, we're looking at Bollinger Bands to track volatility to give us signals when to get in and out of the market. And you can see our wonderful last month, uh, we did uh, last, yeah, last month, 
we did our wonderful Fibonacci's over here near the bottom of a floor and you can see that it's gone up. And with these Fibonacci's? Fibonacci's, you can't see my hands, but you can see it, it's widening and then it's narrowing and then it expands again. So whenever you see it narrowing, things are consolidating, meaning that it's gonna break out real soon. So I love to see these bands narrow and then kind of break out again, again, like a cycle, right? And that's a little weird, isn't it? Oh well. So let's take a look. Let's see what the opportunities were uh, last month right here. So traditionally speaking, uh, I see that we were at a floor last month. So that would have been lots of good buying opportunities. You can see that day it just kind of had a, a big candle and it was shot up. But then it was really exuberant. You could see right there. And now it's hovering around the highs uh, looking for the next dip. So. Uh, you'll see also I got a couple of other indicators here, the RSI, and you can see the momentum for it going up is quite strong. So this is the RSI, this is just stock um, default settings, and you can see the sentiment since there is rising in strength momentum uh, of becoming really strong and growing, oversold, overbought. And I, I don't know if you can see these lines here, right there, the 70 and the 30 is what's highlighted, different than the stochastics. If it's over 70, it's kind of overbought, yes. And then when it's below the 30, undersold, I got that right. And of course we got our MACD here and it is it is green and these, these ones are fanning out. Where did that second arrow go, where did you go? There. there it is, up there. And as you can see, it is green. That means um, the buyers are coming in here and slowly every day just making it happen. Holy camoly the time, I tell you. Let's move on to this. What's, what else is going to move the market? Uh, you, we didn't see an earnings call on there for a long time, so let's go check that out. What else could really move the needle? And here we see the last time that they uh, met was January 25th, so we're kind of due. Uh, we, we were expecting 0.4, they gave us 0.41, just a little upside. Now we're expecting a little bit better from them, 0.67. We don't know when they're going to, uh, we don't know what they'll post, but they are coming in at April 19th, so just about two or three weeks away, and then we'll get some movement and prices. But what else could swing the markets? We're looking today, economic events. 21 earnings, one stock split, 16, uh, 61 economic events. And you'll see that there's not a lot going on for the US. I do know that the world leaders are kind of meeting, they're discussing Russia and their sanctions, but they're also, um, I just got word they're not gonna ban oil uh, from Russia. So we will see how that uh, impacts some of the energy sector, but this, uh, is definitely utilities, and the only thing that I could see here is USD cattle. That's some natural gas for you. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All right, with that said, let's get over to our intraday charts, which is a mess. Let's see here. Let's get that going, and that is the intraday five-day chart for this month. Let's lay down some Fibonacci's for some highs and some lows. You can see there's eight uh, 81 low, their high is 84.2. I'm gonna try to match this up with some good lines here. I think this one is a really good Fibonacci floor and a good Fibonacci high. So I'm gonna lay it down like that, zoom on in right here. As you can see, it looks like it's rain bounced to the top side. It dipped down here. So I'd say a strong floor at uh, 38.17. Uh, and as high as 84, so that's only a dollar and 15 cents ish uh, spread, but it looks like it's in a bouncing around in a range.